thanks for staying with us. We are very happy to have back with us again today Congressman Patrick Murphy from Florida's 18th Congressional District to talk about the many important issues he's been working on to benefit the people of Port St. Lucie and the surrounding Treasure Coast area. Congressman Murphy, thank you for coming back. Great to have you here. Great to be here. Thanks for having me back. You've been uh, up in Washington, D.C. now more than a year since yes. you've been uh, elected and sworn in, and we know you're keeping busy. You've got an awful lot going on, mm -hmm. so a little time here today. We very much appreciate to talk to the people yes. of Port St. Lucie, our viewers, about some of the things that you've been working on. And I know a big one first on everyone's mind is uh, always the uh, Indian River Lagoon and the estuary. There's a lot happening with that on the state level, the local level, and also at the federal mm -hmm. level. You've been working, uh, working towards some legislation and yes. some improvements. Yes, I mean, this is really one of the top issues uh, in our office, and uh, you hit the nail on the head. It, it's all about working with the local, the state, and the federal government, and making sure that all uh, government officials and all the agencies are on the same page. And when you look back you know, sort of historically at some of the problems, it's because they're working against each other and fighting about funding. Uh, we are finally in a place where the scientists are comfortable with what needs to be done to uh, solve and to, to cure what they have done in the past because they've made a lot of mistakes. And we are finally at a place uh, with some projects that are re really pivotal times. So my focus has been funding and uh, explaining to other members of Congress around the country that don't understand the importance of the Everglades, that don't understand you know, what this means to not only our way of life and our, our lifestyle, but what it means to our economy. And, and making that uh, fiscal argument that for every single dollar spent on these investments in our environment, it comes back three to one, uh, some people say four to one, to our local economy. So these are smart investments. So we are working very closely with other members of Congress, making sure they understand what the priorities are, uh, working with the administration and working with the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to make sure that programs like uh, the repairs on the, on the Herbert Hoover Dyke are going through, that the C-44 is being funded. Uh, we also finally passed uh, a bill called War or the Water Resource Development Act. Passed the Senate, it passed the House. It is now going to what's called a conference committee. It's in this conference committee. They're hashing out the differences. It will come back to a, a final vote. We are hoping that comes up for a vote soon. WERDA has not passed the House in about seven years now. Uh, that's disgraceful. It's supposed to be a two-year bill. We have to get this passed. There are some huge wins in there for our area, for the Everglades, uh, that will help all of these issues that we're dealing with. Will that help provide financial resources, or what does that, what's the main uh, thing it offers? Yes, it's mainly, uh, it's a couple things. It's mainly financial resources, and uh, what it does is prioritize some of the uh, main uh, projects. One of those uh, is C uh, C44. It helps C44. It starts with C43 as well, gets that off the ground, and helps with the long-term goal of getting this water to move south. It's not going to happen overnight. We, we have to eventually get there, but we have to work with programs like SEP, uh, the Central Everglades Plan. Uh, get our resources together, get everyone on the same page, which includes South Florida Water Management District, working with them, working with State Senator Negron, who uh, held a great panel here uh, locally and got a lot of the ideas together and got the State House and the State Senate together. I've been trying to do the same at the federal level so people up there understand uh, you know, what's going on. And a key piece uh, to this is getting what's called a chief support. It's basically a final stamp of approval from the Army Corps of Engineers, getting that done for uh, some of the big projects in the area. If we can get that done, if we get set, then the things can really start moving. There's a matching program with the state and the federal government where funds are matched. Uh, so once when one goes, the other one must go too. Uh, so we, we have a lot of work to do, but we're getting really close. Right. Now you've talked a lot uh, about having bipartisan efforts, working together at different agencies, different levels. You've talked about it on this program in the past before. Uh, and now this is a great example of that happening, mm -hmm. where it really does. It's very obvious different agencies, different levels have to be involved. Have to. And that's what's going to find the proper solution to this. And, and the scientists you mentioned, that their advice has to be respected because yes. they're the ones who study these issues. Yes. Uh, so it kind of takes a whole lot of people working together on this one. Yeah, exactly right. And in this one, the results here, this is not a partisan issue where people, no. one party wants something that's drastically bad for the lagoon and somebody wants mm -hmm. something different. So this gives you an opportunity to kind of put your ideas into play. Y yes, no, you're exactly right. And this shouldn't be a, a red issue, a blue issue, a, you know, state, a federal. We're all involved here and it's it's 
a lot of years in the making to get to this point where we have these devastating discharges that we, we must uh, prevent in the future and must do everything we can in the near term to solve this problem. And there, uh, it's, there's no silver bullet. You know, if there was, it would have happened by now. Uh, one of the big things that I've been sort of fighting against uh, in D.C. is we are, in, of course, a very tough economy, very tough environment. And uh, I'm a fiscal hawk. I'm a CPA focused on, on balancing our budget and reducing our long-term debt, our short-term deficits. And uh, I do believe, however, that there are certain investments that need to be made in our country. And part of the, the problem, I believe, in our country is the, the sort of short-term thinking uh, where everyone's worried about their next election. You know, part of what made our country so great is that we believed in America. We believed in our country. We would invest in children's education. We would invest in infrastructure, whether that's roads and bridges, or whether that's C-44, or, you know, our river, uh, research development, all these areas that we uh, used to invest in. We must do a better job at that, understanding that there's certain investments that are smart, where you get return on investment. Those are the smart areas. At the same time, we need to cut the wasteful spending, the duplicative spending, the fraudulent spending, and really focus on those areas. And that's an area that uh, we've really sort of had some progress on in, in the Congress. Uh, this freshman group that I was able to start called United Solutions got almost 50 percent of the freshman class on board. One of our main pieces of, le of legislation was called the SAVE Act. That identified almost $230 billion of wasteful spending. I mean, that's disgraceful. We could find that, like that we found that wasteful spending. And we got five amendments passed to, to cut tens of billions of dollars in wasteful spending. And you, with your financial background, you are a master of accounting. Uh, a master and <laughs> and uh, you're the right guy to be on some of those committees, to be looking at those kind of things. You're on yes. some financial committees yes. uh, looking into this kind of stuff, see if there's duplicative efforts and mm -hmm. money being wasted. Yes. Not a good return on investment. Mm -hmm. Let's use that to switch over a little bit to some of the things you've been, uh, I know there's so much more going on with the river, but we got a, little, a limited mm -hmm. amount of time here. But let's talk also a little bit about uh, some economic development kind okay. of ideas. You also are looking at, uh, you're sponsoring uh, legislation to help some small businesses mm -hmm. uh get some investment going better. Yeah. How does that work? Well, small businesses are really the, the key to any recovery and really the backbone of our country. Uh, of course, everyone's proud of the GEs of the world and the Honeywells, great companies, but what leads a recovery are the small businesses. And two-thirds of every new job come from a small business. And that, by and large, is what this district is composed of, are small businesses. I'm fortunate enough to sit on the Small Business Committee in Washington, D.C. And uh, some of the things that I've tried to incorporate are ideas and mishaps and things I learned in the private sector and bring them to Washington because unfortunately not enough people up there have that sort of private sector experience and I think in all of DC there's only 10 I think CPAs up there so uh, what we did is try to combine those two uh, backgrounds small business and uh, accounting right now most of our small uh, businesses uh, a lot of them ha have a manufacturing capacity to them or they invest in capital so we put a bill forward that said you can uh, continue to accelerate uh, depreciation for investments of up to $2.5 million. That would affect the small businesses, let them depreciate those assets uh, quicker. Uh, that helps uh, them make that decision to invest and put people back to work quicker. Uh, so that was, that was an initial bill we started should help local manufacturers if we can get that passed. And there's another bill we put forward, and I don't want to bore everybody with this, but uh, what it does is address the depreciation tables. 20, 30 years ago, uh, you know, take a cell phone, for example. Phones, we didn't have cell phones then. Uh, 30 years ago, manufacturing equipment didn't expire and didn't, uh, you know, uh, it, it would last 30 years or so. Now it's 15 years, 10 years. Uh, this morning I was at a manufacturing company, about 100 people there. Uh, the equipment that they have will last, the, the lifespan is 10 years, but it's no good after about six or eight because it's already too old. So uh, this bill would let companies reevaluate, uh, let the Congress reevaluate the depreciation tables. Companies can then depreciate that equipment uh, quicker. Therefore, they want to invest in new equipment, keep things turning, make our country more competitive. Well, this is very important to people who are looking at starting a business, investing here. And in Port St. Lucie, we have a lot of empty land that we are trying to encourage businesses to look at. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of room for growth and for manufacturing. We're looking to attract some of that. We'd like it to yes. be clean, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but that does matter in this city, so that's a, an important thing mm -hmm. because uh, so much of our future and our growth depends on the growth of business. People right. want jobs. People want that kind of security. That's number one focus. 
economy. Yes. So that's an important subject uh, for this area. And then there are some other issues nationally that people have their eye on. Mm -hmm. American, the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. uh, that's affecting people all over America. It's been in the news a whole lot. Uh, I know you've uh, done some things uh, working on that. Let's talk about that a little bit. The Affordable Care Act, how's it going right now from your perspective? Sure. Uh, the Affordable Care Act, of course, was passed before I was ever elected to Congress, and uh, I believe we can't go backwards. It's there. Uh, no matter what anybody says, despite the 45 attempts to repeal it, it's the law now. We must focus and put all of our efforts and energy into improving it, to getting it right. There's no piece of legislation uh, that comes out of the Congress that's perfect, and this is certainly far from it. So that's where the resources need to be. That's where the Republicans, the Democrats, need to really focus on is looking forward, not, not backwards. So uh, what do we do from here? How do we improve it? Uh, recently, uh, we put a bill forward that said, and, and had a lot of talks with the, with the administration about helping small businesses, and said that, yes, there is some leniency for businesses under 50 that they don't have to you know uh, implement this uh, but we said we're at 50 to 100 people so we uh had a lot of conversations. Turns out the administration is finally starting to listen to some of these improvements to some of these ideas from the Congress, both Republicans and Democrats. So now, if you're a business 100 employees or under, uh, you have a one-year delay in the implementation of, of the Affordable Care Act. This will help these businesses, you know, get uh, everything in in order uh, for their employees and make sure that they can go on the exchange as a shop exchange where they can go on and look at all the private insurance companies that are competitively, you know, show what the price is going to be and what the coverage w will be as well. So that's one example. Uh, I think I'm on 14, maybe even more pieces of legislation to improve the Affordable Care Act. And, you know, some of these uh, bills include uh, repealing the tax on medical devices. Some of these are delays in, in the implementation of it. Uh, so there are things that need to be done to improve, and that's where the focus needs to be. I will note, however, just last week I was at a, at a, at a fair gentleman came up to me and has sunglasses, takes his sunglasses off, and, and before he could start talking, the, the tears started coming. He started explaining that his wife, for the first time in 10 years, finally got health care and what that meant to their family. That, you know, he could finally leave his job and go start his own new company now because she can now get health insurance. So uh, there are stories like this every day. There was a, a seven-year-old with a lung disease, got a call from the, the mother, we chatted. At seven years old, he had hit his lifetime cap from the insurance company. He was dropped from the insurance company. They would never treat him the rest of his life. You know, that, this is not the America that I, I know, that you know. This is not a third world country. Uh, we cannot be dropping seven-year-olds and telling them they're done for the rest of their life. So there are some uh, things in the Affordable Care Act that are good. You know, closing the donut hole for seniors, uh, not you know, uh, dropping people if they get sick, not denying them coverage if they have a pre-existing condition. These are things we must uh, protect in the Affordable Care Act, uh, but we must look at ways to improve it going forward. So there's an awful lot going on that you have to keep up with. This is complex stuff. The Affordable Care Act is, uh, many of these issues, the river. You have to switch your attention. One day you have to become an expert in health care law. The next day you have to know about environmental issues, uh, business. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you do to keep up with it? You've had to vote on, I don't know how many hundreds of issues in your time in office now. How do you keep up with all this and make sure that you've, you've You've got accurate information. Uh, hundreds of votes and, and, and constantly reading, uh, constantly in briefings, constantly sitting with uh, my team, with other teams, with other members of Congress, learning, uh, constantly learning about the issues because nobody is an expert on everything. You must constantly learn and keep your eyes and ears open and be open to learning new information, looking at the latest results. And uh, one thing I'll note on that is I was recently uh, voted or, or ranked, I was ranked as the top five most independent voter in the Congress top 5% for independent voters. Every issue that we get, every bill we get, I don't listen to what the Democrats say or the Republicans. I look at, you know, how this legislation is going to affect this district. You know, what's it mean for Port St. Lucie? What's it mean for the state of Florida? What's it mean for our country? You know, how does it sit with me inside? Uh, not listen to the parties on, on either side. Uh, too many people do that. Uh, so I'm proud to be an independent voice and constantly trying to learn and educate myself uh, on each and every issue. So if you vote for something that someone doesn't like, we shouldn't call you up and shout in anger. We should just uh, respect it that you came to that decision. No, no, please uh, call me. I, I, very informed I, means. I love hearing from, from all constituents, whether they agree or disagree. Uh, at the end of the day, it's my job to be uh, this district's voice in Washington, D.C. 
So uh, I try to make myself as accessible as, as possible. My whole office, we try to make ourselves accessible. We have four offices throughout the district. Uh, we've done over 300 public events in the district in the first year I was elected. Uh, several dozen uh, what we call Congress in your company, where we go to different companies either do the work with the employees, uh, listen to, you know, the administration, you know, listen to the, the, the team there about what they're doing, what we could help uh, to let them grow, you know, what maybe is holding them back. Uh, and we're constantly out there in front of people listening. And, and that's uh, my job. And I love listening to people and hearing their ideas. And, and it's my job to take that to D.C. and make that vote for them. You are very accessible. I would note that you have an office right here in City Hall yes. uh, where there's a staff member who can at least uh, give some information, take some questions, get the information back to you. And also the fact that you come on this program to uh, to address the people uh, of Port St. Lucie. That's real important. We appreciate that very much. Uh, any other uh, things you want us to know about uh, in Port St. Lucie? Some of the things you've been doing. There's so many things. Uh, as you mentioned, hundreds of votes. We hit on yeah. some big ones here, uh, but I'm sure there's more. Well, I, I definitely want to congratulate Port St. Lucie. Uh, Forbes recently ranked Port St. Lucie as one of the top 25 uh, cities in the country to retire to. Uh, that's that's awesome. That's something I'm proud of. That's something I can, you know, go to my peers and, and, and talk about up in Washington about, you know, how cool it is to represent, you know, one of the top 25 places to retire. Uh, on that note, I, I do want to uh, mention something that we're rolling out in, uh, pretty soon here, and that, that's our, our jobs plan. I mentioned all the companies that we've been going to uh, over the past year in office, and we've compiled a lot of these ideas, a lot of what we've been hearing from these companies into a jobs plan and it addresses some of the manufacturing ideas we have to bring manufacturing back. It talks about uh, regulations and what we can do to smarten regulations. You know, sometimes we get caught in this argument of too many, too few. Uh, often it's what's smarter and uh, getting away from this idea of one size fits all because what suits, uh, you know, uh, one of the biggest banks in the world, Bank of America, for example, versus Seacoast, two very different pieces of legislation. I'm on the Financial Services Committee, so adamant about helping our small, our community bankers, our mid-sized banks, our regional banks, because that's really where the rubber hits the road. Uh, so it's regulations, looking at the tax code, you know, being one of the few CPAs in Congress, focusing on how do we make our tax code more efficient? How do we streamline it? How do we make it more fair and, and competitive on a global scale? Uh, and how do we simplify it? That's one of the greatest frustrations I hear every day is our complex uh, tax code. So uh, these ideas, many more. We talk about some specific industries in the district like citrus, like research development, uh, some of the, the, the um, um, companies we have like Scripps and Max Planck and VGTI and Tory Pines, uh, what we can do to continue to support uh, these research uh, institutions. Well, great. You do have a lot going on. It is an awful lot to keep up with, uh, but we do appreciate you. Appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about it today. If somebody wants to follow uh, Congressman Patrick Murphy a little bit more and find out a little bit more about what you're about, where can they find you? Uh, they should start at the website, uh, Patrick Murphy, uh, dot mail, uh, sorry, Patrick Murphy dot house dot gov. Uh, that's the website. Uh, they can find us on Facebook, uh, Congressman Patrick Murphy, uh, or uh, on Twitter as well. So uh, we're accessible. Uh, they can find us online, call any office, uh, mail us, come by, set up an appointment, and we're there to hear from everybody. Congressman Patrick Murphy, keeping your constituents uh, well updated with your activities and all that's going on. Thank you. Appreciate you taking appreciate the time it. to join Thank us you. today. Great Thank to you be very here. much. Okay. All right. And we'll be back after this quick message. Stay with us.